Welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today, we are diving into the psoas muscle. While it's best known as a primary hip flexor, the psoas often comes up in discussions about stress, trauma, and the body survival responses. You might have heard it called the fight or flight muscle, or even the muscle of the soul. Beyond everyday movements like walking and sitting, there are interesting theories suggesting the psoas could influence how our bodies handle stress and trauma. While the science isn't fully settled, many experiences and insights are compelling, and I think it's worth exploring this connection with an open mind. In this video, I'll break down what the psoas does, how it might connect our stress responses, including fight, flight, and freeze, and why a mindful approach to working with it could make a difference. Let's get into it. I don't want to dive too deep into the actual anatomy of the psoas here, but there are a few points I want to mention that are important for today's topic. The psoas is a deep muscle that runs from your lower spine to your thigh bone, making it the only muscle that directly links your spine to your legs. As one of the main hip flexors, the psoas helps lift your leg and supports movements like walking, running, and climbing. It also stabilizes the spine and acts as a bridge between lower body strength and upper body control. Its connection to the diaphragm through connective tissue also means it can play a role in how you breathe, especially under stress, but more on that in a moment. The psoas is often called the fight or flight muscle because of its strong link to the autonomic nervous system, which manages our stress responses. When we encounter a stressful situation, the sympathetic nervous system triggers increased muscle tension, including the psoas. This prepares the body for quick action, whether that's running away, bracing for impact, or engaging in a fight. Because of its connection to the diaphragm, increased tension in the psoas can also restrict deep breathing. This often leads to shorter, shallower breaths, which, while useful for quick bursts of action, can reduce the efficiency of oxygen exchange over time and contributes to a feeling of being on edge. When neither fighting nor fleeing is an option, the body can enter a freeze response. This is a survival mechanism where the body essentially shuts down to minimize harm. During this state, muscle tension increases throughout the body, creating a kind of body armor to protect vital organs. The psoas muscle plays a central role by pulling the legs towards the abdomen and curling the spine forward, so it creates a compact, protective posture. This fetal-like position uses the bone of the ribcage, pelvis, and limbs as a shield. This response not only protects the body physically, but also conserves energy and reduces detection by potential threats. However, if the freeze response persists, especially in people with a history of trauma, the psoas can remain tight as if still guarding against the threat. This chronic tension can lead to a forward-leaning posture, lower back pain, and a sense of being physically or emotionally stuck. It might also contribute to ongoing feelings of anxiety, hypervigilance, and disrupted breathing patterns. Now, there are many ways to work with the psoas, stretching, manual therapy, tremor release exercises, and many others. If you know any, just please share them in the comments. But rather than focusing on the techniques themselves, let's talk about the mindset. Since the connection between the psoas and trauma is still being explored, I think a cautious approach is the best. It's better to be safe than sorry. Some experts warn that deep stretching or heavy pressure may increase tension instead of relieving it. A gentler approach, slow, controlled movements, using props and prioritizing comfort can be more effective. Because the psoas is so close to key nerves and blood vessels, hands-on work should be done with care. If you consider manual techniques, consulting a trained professional is a good idea. Breathing, of course, also matters. Since the psoas connects to the diaphragm, deep, steady breathing techniques can help release tension naturally, improving movement and relaxation. So the goal here isn't to push limits, but to tune into your body and move with ease. To sum this all up, the psoas muscle offers an interesting perspective on how physical movement connects to the body's response to stress and trauma. 
While there's still a lot to learn, I'm genuinely curious to see what future research will reveal about this connection. That said, trauma responses are complex, involving not just muscles, but the entire nervous system, emotions, and past experiences. It's unlikely that one muscle alone could hold the key to understanding or resolving trauma. Reducing such a complex mechanism to a single muscle might oversimplify what's really happening in the body. Still, when working with the psoas, a mindful approach can make a big difference. Gentle exploration of movement, respecting your unique anatomy and avoiding forceful techniques can support a healthier, more resilient body. Whether you're looking to improve flexibility, reduce pain or find a greater sense of calm, working with the psoas can be a helpful part of the process, as long as it's done with care. Well, I think that's everything I have for you for today. I hope this gives you a fresh perspective on the psoas muscle and encourages you to explore your movement with curiosity and patience. If you would like to support the channel, please hit the like button, subscribe and check out my other videos. If you are a company interested in sponsoring a video of mine or looking for a custom made animation, feel free to reach out. I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me and I hope to see you soon back inside the lab.